Here's five quick and easy tips that you can easily copy, paste, and implement into your gameplay to level up your Akuma and quickly reach master rank. The first Akuma tip is to bring back the classic Street Fighter 4 combo, Tatsu into Sweep. So this combo was present in Street Fighter 5 as well, but it wasn't as useful, I feel like, in that version of Akuma. Um, but this combo, this classic conversion, is actually really powerful in Street Fighter 6 for the simple fact that after converting um, into the Tatsu into the Sweep, if you double dash, you're plus four and in throw range. And if you know about the frame data, you know about the magic number. Plus four is a magic number because that means you can dash up and do a throw or you can dash up and do something like a, a sand medium punch, which actually gives you plus frames if they block. And if they wake up with the jab, um, you'll see that these offensive options actually beat their fastest wake up option. So you can see here the throw is medium enough to beat wake up crush and light punch from Luke. And of course, the medium punch, you could actually get a full combo conversion if they happen to be uh, foolishly mashing against Akuma on wake up. So it's not necessarily the most damaging ender. Like if you were doing this knockdown, the sweep does do less damage than say going into a DP. So of course, it's a classic example of sacrificing damage for better pressure and mid screen especially. I think this is really powerful to keep the momentum going. Of course, if they are crouching, you need to keep in mind that Akuma's routing with his combos is very dependent on understanding or not. So if they're crouching land to hit, just find a way to combo to like maybe stand medium kick, which forces stand. So from this dry rush conversion, I do like crouching medium to stand medium kick here, and that will force stand, get the Tatsu sweep, dash in, get the meaty, you know, get some pressure going, get your combos going. So instead of doing double dash Oki, okay, I can also get this knockdown and just hold up forward and maybe do like a jump in fierce punch. Um, it depends on the distance though. What I find is if they're a little bit further away, like you do a few jabs into it and then sweep, you might want to do a jump in roundhouse. If they're too far, like you just saw, this is actually not effective, but if you have a few jabs in there and they back rise, jump heavy kick has a bit more horizontal range and it's sometimes more effective at landing the safe jump, just gotta press it a little early. And why is this good? Because this is a safe jump. You see here, if Guile does wake up OD flash kick, um, you saw that if he didn't do it, he was, he was blocking the jump in. But if he actually does the wake up flash kick here and I jump in and then hold down back during the jump, it will option select block the reversal. This works for you know, like Ken, Luke, Ryu, ODDP as well. And this is powerful because it forces people to take the mix up. So of course, if you do this knockdown and they, uh, they reversal, you know, time to have a, a huge combo. You can get your big combo damage going. Most people will understand eventually that that is not an option against these safe jumps. So once they are actually forced to block the safe jump, it allows you to get in and establish, you know, more throw pressure. So if you get an up close safe jump with a fierce punch, because you do a conversion that doesn't leave too much pushback and walk in and get a throw, it's very powerful. And beyond that, against characters with charge reversals like Guile, if you're in the corner, this is really devastating because this option gets rid of their reversal. They're first forced to hold back to block the safe jump, which means they're no longer to have down charge. And that means the next mix up, they cannot do a flash kick or like a DJ uh, OD up kicks to break through. So your next mix up after the safe jump is safe from their uh, traditional OD reversal. You can go for a throw, uh, go for a shimmy, you know, pressure them with buttons. So the safe jump allows you to get an extra safe mix up after forcing them to block the jump in, which also does some drive chip damage. And of course, if they were to do something like wake up parry, predicting the safe jump, that allows you to mix in an empty jump throw. So it's a really strong offensive tool to have, especially against charge characters, I feel. Um, like I mentioned before, it's not as effective if you have too many hits and you might be left too far to go for this. So if you do like a long conversion like this, I would suggest just going for the double dash Oki instead. It covers more range, but definitely mix in the double dash Oki and the safe jump from doing your light Tatsu into sweep knockdown. The next tip is how to get Oki even if you don't really want to sacrifice her damage. So take this conversion to Akuma's, I'm calling it Hashogeki, his new uh, palm move here. If you end in the heavy version of this move, it actually does a decent amount of damage. It's not necessarily the best combo ender mid screen for damage, but you know, it does more than doing something into like a Tatsu, for example. But you actually can chase the opponents down after doing this knockdown. So, say you get some kind of dry rush conversion, do the heavy Hashigeki move, heavy demon flip, hold down. This will cancel your demon flip into kick and the empty demon option you, you achieve by holding down during the demon flip. And look where you are plus two and in grab range. So that means that, of course, if the opponent is waking up with buttons from, you know, from this knockdown, you can get a, a strike throw mix. The timing takes a little bit of practice because you have to time your throw or your follow-up option to occur after holding down to cancel the demon flip. 
So it's a little uh, a little strict in the timing. Um, it takes a little bit of practice to get, but once you get the timing, this unlocks pressure from from this part of the screen, and you can get full combo conversion. So the, the throw works, and here's what I like to do. If I were to go into the lights, this is the option I like to use. So crouching line kick, crouching jab, stand line kick um, into the uh, light Hashogeki will actually convert from there if they're crouching. So you have good strike throw options to keep the pressure going. This is also a viable option if they recover in place instead of back roll, but instead of uh, chasing them down, you're actually gonna swap sides with them. So that may not be what you always wanna do depending on the screen positioning, but it's definitely something to keep in mind here. So if you do this, you see you actually are plus two and on the other side. So same thing applies. You can go ahead and apply this and then get your, your throw or whatever it may be. And then I feel like once you start mixing in this option from the demon flip, this is like the safe pressure approach. It opens up the door for people to start respecting the demon a bit more to allow you to do things like empty demon into slide, which is plus on block. Um, or, you know, you can, you can stop it short and just do dive kick instead. And you have to manually time to get like plus frames on that. But it makes the rest of the demon options much more powerful. So use the heavy Hashogeki into heavy demon uh, empty to get your safe Oki, and then use that mix up to then scare people to respect the other options that Akuma has out of Demon Flip. The next Akuma tip is to use his charge heavy fireball Oki. So heavy fireball actually uh, achieves the charge version, the level two version of it, the fastest. It can be as done as early as like 31 frames of startup. So you have to manually charge the timing to get this level two fireball. And the reason why it's so powerful is, you know, you can get knockdowns by going into uh, heavy kick Tatsu, from a from light tatsu or even going from it into it from like the heavy hashogeki from this combo ender you can do meaty uh charge heavy fireball and it will actually meaty the opponent and beat their wake of jabs so you have to mainly time it does take a little bit of practice you can even do it from tatsu sweep and once you land it you actually get a juggle combo there so a basic conversion would just be something like uh going to another heavy tatsu and then you can loop this and you know if the wake up buttons are gonna get beat and why is this good? So if they're not just spamming wake up buttons every single time, of course, if they block after the first hit, uh, you actually get plus frames from this. This is plus on block. So you can see there it's plus two on block, the charge fireball and your point blank throw pressure. And uh, if you're following along with the mechanics of the game, why is it good to have a meaty projectile that is plus on block? Because meaty projectiles beat the vast majority of the wake up level ones in the game. So if they decide to wake up level one, this meaty uh, projectile will just beat it. So it's a very safe option to, to rush down the opponent. And uh, depending on the height, you can also get, you know, extended combos as well. It's not just, you don't have to immediately just go into uh, the uh, the heavy top two. If it hits high enough, you can actually get dry rush like buttons from it as well. And of course, good old JP here, everyone's favorite. His only reversal option besides level one or level three would also be OD Amnesia. And of course, as we all should know by now, Amnesia loses to projectiles. So you can see here is Wicked Up Amnesia, but it's in no avail due to Akuma's plus on block charge fireball here. So fireball Oki is really powerful in a lot of cases if you have it. So definitely know when you have it and abuse it when you can. It's really good in certain matchups. JP basically has no reversal options versus meaty projectiles like that. And if characters are in burnout, your opponent's in burnout and they only have like a level one or a level two that is not uh, an attack that's invincible, they essentially have to hold that, right? And th then the meaty projectile will actually be plus six on block. So really good to know this option and to go for it when you want to lock down people's reversal options by using a charge plus on block heavy punch fireball from Akuma. For the next Akuma tip here, I'm actually gonna have a little bit of a pop quiz before revealing the secret. Tell me what you see wrong with this combo. So on the surface, this combo seems pretty good, and it was one I was originally using with Akuma whenever I landed a big hit and wanted to dump all my dry rush resources, and it does a decent amount of damage, 3,393, but there's actually something critically wrong with this conversion, and I'll do another combo to demonstrate. So do you see the difference? This conversion, when I swapped out the stand heavy kick for a towards heavy punch instead, does 3,945 damage, nearly 600 more damage. And why is that? That's because stand heavy kick is a unique move that applies more scaling when using a combo than towards heavy punch. 
So let's show the details for that. So after landing this hit and going to stand heavy kick for the second time from the dry rush, when I enter into my crouch fierce, notice the damage scaling uh, displayed there in the attack damage bar above Akuma's head. It says 51%. So Crouch Heavy Punch in that point of the combo is doing 51% of its original damage. If I instead swap it out with Horse Heavy Punch, then do Crouch Fierce, you see it does 59% of its original damage. So by the time you get to the Crouch Heavy Punch, it's doing more of its original damage and it has less scaling. Every time you use Stand Heavy Kick in the combo, it adds more scaling. So even though Stand Heavy Kick and Towards Heavy Punch have the same amount of base damage, because Sand Heavy Kick and uh, scales your combo more heavily as you go on, the more and more of them you use in a combo, it actually does significantly less damage. I didn't know that at first, and I was wasting a lot of meter and not getting the job done with these combos. When you can do huge damage, so once you get into you know a decent part of your combo, uh, definitely instead go for Towards Heavy Punch into Crouch Fierce for your Dry Rush extensions. You will always do more damage than using Stand Heavy Kick. So Stand Heavy Kick can start your combos, but unless you're trying to style, because it does look badass, um, I definitely recommend always, always going into towards Heavy Punch, Crouch Heavy Punch for your Dry Rush loops here. You will do significantly more damage and start melting people's life bars. Tip number five for Akuma here. This one's super easy to copy paste, and I think it's super powerful. In the corner, when you land throw, and you want more ways to mix up the opponent besides basic strike throw, you know, he does get a throw loop here. You can actually just approach and go in for another throw, go in for a strike here. But what if you can do something more? And guess what? You can. Command grab. This setup is super easy to implement and it's really powerful because it beats, of course, wake up jab. So I like to give airtight setups to help people rink up out of master because people like to uh, to mash. So if you just do the teleport here and just mash throw, it'll throw in the earliest frame and that lines up perfectly to connect with the opponent and beat them if they wake up jab. And this will get people super scared. They'll start wanting to do a lot more things on wake up. So um, just, just copy paste this. Incorporate it into your game plan, and once that's done, people are going to want to jump out of the corner. Then you can you can land things like you know just throw that walk up crouching medium kick something of that sort. Very powerful to mix in your to your game plan to catch people off guard and start opening them up more in the corner. Bonus round tip here, and this is something that I make sure to mention in all these tip videos. While all these other previous tips are really easy to copy paste and implement, remember you have to have your fundamentals down in order to level up in Street Fighter. No matter what character you're playing, you need to master some of the neutral basics. And of course, that means mastering anti-airing. I think anti-airing is the most important thing to pick up with any new character. And remember, Okuma is a Shoto. You're gonna be playing a lot of the fireball game with him. And when you play the fireball game, that means you need to play the anti-air game with him. So you must be practicing your uppercuts with this character. You can also use Crouch Fierce as well. It, it's a decent Crouch Fierce. It's not my favorite. Um, I tend to default with the uppercuts, but this is definitely your opportunity to practice grinding your uppercuts, grind your cross cuts as well, which is something that I personally am working on as well with Akuma. I tend to use Heavy Punch DP. It works pretty well as an anti-air. Occasionally you get stuffed. If you do it really late, you might want to do something like Light Punch or instead Medium Punch DP but uh, I'm telling you, you must practice the anti-airs. None of these tips will matter if your opponent simply realizes you can't stop them from jumping. They'll just simply jump all over you. So practice your anti-airs, do anti-air drills. I recommend, you know, practicing the dummy, record the jump-ins, doing it on one side, and repeat this over and over until the motion becomes very comfortable. Practice doing it at different ranges. Figure out when you can or cannot DP and grind out the execution for your uppercuts and grind out the awareness of when to uppercut and you will see your win rate skyrocket if you're not already confident in your uppercuts with Akuma. And that's all the tips I had for this video. Please let me know what you think about Akuma and these tips in the comments and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.